so one thing that airlines really struggle with sometimes is competitive pricing actions. Uh, when a competitor puts a new fare into the market or changes a fare, how should that airline uh, respond to that? And uh, there's a variety of ways that you can identify a competitive pricing action. Uh, there are fare management tools that will take the uh, fare feeds from ATPCO and from CETA to uh, give you the capabilities to slice and dice the data to identify a competitor's action and quickly respond to it. Another way other airlines look at um, getting competitive fare information is through screen scraping of websites. Uh, QL2 and Infare are two, uh, the two most prevalent uh, services for that type of uh, uh, service. Um, uh, the one thing you have to be careful with sc uh, screen scraping is that it's, th it's not just the price, it's the availability. And so when you look at that, you have to understand that it might not be the price that's driving it, but more the number of seats that are available. And the last way is sort of the old-fashioned way, which is looking at newspapers. Uh, uh, you'd be surprised even in this day of, age of, of digital, a lot of people find competitive pricing actions in the newspaper. Uh, advertisements on television, things like that. And uh, in many parts of the world, uh, salespeople have leads on pricing in their particular area. So the three things that an airline has to consider when they're trying to make a competitive pricing decision. Uh, the first one is understanding your competitor. Uh, how, does it, how does your competitor react in the marketplace? Uh, are they, do they match you when you change a fare? Are they very aggressive with their pricing? Uh, because it's almost like a chess game. Uh, if you put a fare in the market or they put a fare in the market, how are they going to respond to that? And then conversely, how are you going to respond to the response? And so it's, uh, it, it's very important to, to, to do that, to know, that new, know what your competitor is doing and how they react. Uh, the second part is knowing who your customer is. And what I mean by that is that markets are different, and I'm going to talk about markets a, a little bit later, but um, the pricing action that you're, you're, you're going to take really depends on the type of customer that you have. So for example, if the market is a business market, you might respond differently than if it was a leisure market. And uh, so knowing, knowing those, those customer segments are, are really pretty uh, important. Uh, and the, the third piece, and, and the most important piece, is understanding the, the market profile uh, and the type of market you have to, to respond to a pricing action. So, for example, one of the things that we recommend is putting markets into quadrants uh, based on yield and uh, market share. So if you could visualize this, there's a, a, a corner that says high yield, high market share uh, market. Um, your price, the way you would uh, react to a competitor's price if you're in a high yield, high share market uh, is, is uh, more that because, you've, you, because you have a, a strong presence in the, in the market, you can not only match their price, but you might be able to even take a premium because you have such strength in the marketplace. If you went to the entire other side of the, of the spectrum where it's low yield, low market share, you as an airline have very little pricing power. And so what happens is when the, when the competitor puts the fare in, um, pricing above them will do nothing because they're, they're the strong in the market. But conversely, it gives you an opportunity that maybe you can undercut because the, the, uh, the, the, the dominant carrier in the market We'll, we'll just ignore that because it's, it's not in their best interest to, to cut that down. Yeah, every, time, every time you're looking at a competitive pricing action, the one thing that you want to be careful of is dilution. And dilution simply defined is the difference between what a customer actually pays and what they were willing to pay. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very important thing in pricing because you want to make sure that your price points are out there and you're, you're meeting that, that need you have and to, 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 to get the higher revenue. Um, so, so an example of dilution, let's say I have a $100,000 Ferrari and the dealer uh, wants to have a sale and he puts it on sale for $80,000. Well, I don't know that that's going to cause many people to buy more Ferraris because it's still a lot of money. And so by lowering the price but not increasing the demand, 
uh, to, to make up for the, the, the lower price, uh, that's, that's an example of dilution.